Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, and by following your holy will, we gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, good morning to everyone. Um, thank you for coming out today for, for Mass. Um, looks just like every other Sunday out there. Um, <laughs> So thank you very much, and, and um, you know, this is a, a bittersweet occasion, obviously, um, but I just want to, uh, let's make this a, also a joyous one, and not a real sad one. Uh, we, we've had 29 and a half years together, and, we can, and we're going to celebrate that, and uh, just to kind of set the tone, I got a couple of things. One is, is after the uh, parish committee meeting, um, or I'm sorry, after the barbecue, I had to call a special meeting of the parish committee, and I did not want to interfere with the barbecue. I know how important that is to this parish, uh, so I didn't want to say anything before that. So Monday, I notified the parish committee that I need to have a special meeting with you. And I said, please don't call and ask for special details because um, I said it's just too complicated to explain over the phone, and so could you just come on Wednesday? So when they came on Wednesday, they came with two thoughts in their mind. Um, one was is that I was resigning. Uh, the other one is that either Sharon and I were dying. <laughs> um, so when they found out that Sharon and I aren't dying, um, you know, the resignation just seemed a lot less bad. <laughs> um, so we can approach it like that, that this is not a time of dying, that this is just a time of change. And um, also, I, I did see, uh, I went to Frank Marchand's, um, you know, he had a little fundraiser to help him in his uh, battle, you know, paying the bills of cancer. And he did something really cool um, up on the stage when he pulled out all of the wristbands that he had had from his hospital visits. Um, so I want, that, that got me to thinking. Um, I've been a priest for 29 and a half years, and I dress in black, as you know. When you buy a black shirt, you know those little white things? They last longer than the cloth shirts. So, if anybody wants, <laughs> I, if God, <laughs> I'm not done. I, hold on, I'm not done. I have got a couple of collars. No, no. If anybody wants any collars, um, which the hell's me? No, who was it? Timmy. Timmy was uh, Timmy Wachinski was a was a uh, priest every Halloween. I remember, and and so if anybody wants any collars, I've got collars galore. And you can tell that I can supply collars for every priest in the PNCC and have extra, and I don't throw anything away. So can you imagine trying to move out of 19 Fair Street with this kind of attitude? <laughs> We may die. Um, there, there's, there's just so much stuff over there. Um, but you know, let, let's laugh a little bit more. Um, no crying. I don't know how to deal with crying. Uh, I, I don't know how to process that. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of just move forward and celebrate. And um, I thank everybody for the, uh, the emails and the phone calls and everything else. Um, your phone calls broke my phone, literally. I'm not, saying, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not making this up, you broke my phone. And I, it may be coincidence, but I think it's connected. Uh, Friday, the phone was going so crazy um, that at some point, I don't know when, I finally got, I think it was March the Hells he called, and, and um, I couldn't hear him, he couldn't hear me, so I called up Comcast, they had to reboot my phone. And, and, um, and I don't know, like I said, it could be coincidence, it could be connected, but uh, for all of your phone calls, for all of your emails, for, for everything that you said and stopped by and done, and, um, and for 29 and a half years that really I've been blessed to be here, um, I just want to say thank you. And so let's celebrate that today. Also, today is the, and I don't know if we started actually with number one, um, so that is the 383rd taping for FCAP. And I don't know if we started actually with number one or we started at some point. So uh, there's a lot of people at FCAP too that, that get to watch this. And you, you've actually got the, uh, the, the the mic on and all that stuff. Yeah, you gotta have a <laughs> So, uh, huh? Don't, oh yeah, we're editing, we're editing, we're editing. So um, 383rd um, Sunday Mass and, um, of, for FCAP and um, like I said, I, I just, I'll say a couple more things at the end. What I'd like to do 
um, is we will have the hymn to the Holy Spirit at the regular place. I will read your intention prayers at that point. I'll hold off remarks as my sermon to the very end, um, and, and then we'll move forward. Um, but Don Skrowski, there is a, a sermon. So um, <laughs> at this point, if you could please make a private examination of your conscience as we gather for that. Gift to him 
to receive a gift in return. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. The lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's Holy Mass. Thanks, Sorry about that. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Child, when you come to the service of God, stand in justice and fear and prepare your soul for temptation. Alleluia, alleluia. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Alleluia, alleluia. Cleanse my heart, my lips, Almighty God. She cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthy proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthy proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist. Others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But Jesus said to them, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed as to you, but he my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lori Farrick is offered by her sister. And her 
family. And her family. I'd like to offer intentions for you and for your families. Thank you very much. Appreciate that very much. For Lori Fair and for the special intention uh, for my family and myself as well, uh, and all the private prayers that we bring before you at this time, Lord, we offer these to you by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, one last thing I'd just like to mention, if you're following along in the song sheet, I think the choir, because of um, today's situation, they've added a couple of special songs. So if it's on the song sheet, you're more than welcome to sing. Um, if they're different and you know the words, join in. Thank you. <laughs>
My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which will make the remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. In honor of Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints, that may act to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, may your grace and your love flow into us by this holy offering of Mass. And may the youth of your holy church continue to live in you and you live in us. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever.
Father, all those you gave me I would have in my company, where I have received this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, in eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands. Again, he gave thanks to you. He blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do this, do it in remembrance of me.
And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our days, supported by the help of your mercy, that we all be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom. Do you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last should I be entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call to us the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to see you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to see you, but I will say the word, and I shall be healed.
Show me, O Lord, your way, and I will follow. Give me understanding, and I will keep your commandments to the best of my ability. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, may we who derive grace from your holy word and from this holy Eucharist serve you ever faithfully in your holy church. May your spirit guide the youth of every generation to work diligently for the glory of your holy name. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, the sacrifices offered. Pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, am offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and the merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came to be, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, and darkness that did not overcome. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and, and he was in the world, and through him the world was made, and yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered and taught the children of God. These they heard, who believe in his name, were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh and made him dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. chapter that is ending leads us to a new beginning. The past that we are leaving means the future that we are winning. Each change that fills the present sets the stage for our tomorrow, and how we meet each challenge helps determine joy or sorrow. In every new beginning, spirit plays a vital part, spirit with capital S. We must approach tomorrow with a strong and a steady heart. So as we turn the corner, let's all apprehension shed and fill our hearts with confidence as we proceed ahead. So that came out of nowhere, out of the attic, and I thought it was very appropriate. Um, back in May of 2016, 
or April of 2016, there, our Supreme Council meets on an annual basis, and um, I guess I was on the agenda, and I was very honored to be on the agenda of the Supreme Council. But after the, um, after the Supreme Council meeting, I was called in with Bishop, uh, up to Bishop Paul's Cathedral in, in uh, New Hampshire. And at that point, uh, between the end of the uh, Supreme Council in late April until May 23rd, I was under the assumption that I was going to be relieved of my uh, duties as a priest. Uh, so for one month, I was in limbo. And I have to tell you, I want to say this right off the bat. I, I spoke to uh, Bishop Paul on Friday. He's extremely cordial, extremely sympathetic, and he's extremely concerned about me, my family, and the holy name of Jesus. So please keep that in mind throughout. Uh, I, I've told some people, um, I'm not holding anybody, there, there's no blame to share. Um, the people who are, um, are, are directing the church, their motives are, are right. They're not doing anything to, to you know, screw anybody. It's just that their motives and my, and, and my understanding of what the PNCC uh, are so radically different that I've had to leave. Um, I, I get to celebrate Mass and I look at Bishop Hoder over there. And, and Bishop Hoder, my God, I... I um, I've been walking around in my, my jacket with a little help in, and it has Bishop Hoder. And on the other side, um, a couple, maybe three Memorial Days ago, uh, Jack Cooper gave me the uh, God is Still Speaking comma from the United Church of Christ. And I've had Bishop Hoder here and that comma over here because I love the idea that God is still speaking. And I always tell my UCC friends, I wish we had come up with that because that sounds so national Catholic. Um, so I've had both. And the only thing I'm going to do next Sunday is switch them around. Uh, Bishop Hoder will always uh, be near and dear to me and an inspiration to me. And I look at him without a bishop's ring, without a mitre, with that black simple cassock, and uh, I'm inspired by him because he really was just truly a, a humble man of God. And I've always tried to follow his example um, as a national Catholic. And, um, well, anyway, that got me into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and so uh, from May 23rd, I'm, I'm sorry, from the end of April at the Supreme Council meeting until May 23rd, I really truly believed um, that I was going to be, uh, well, I guess put it bluntly, fired. And so um, at that point, I had to think um, about what am I going to do? Because after mom and dad spent an awful lot of money for me to go to Brandeis, I have no skills. <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, uh, I have a philosophy and a political science degree, and uh, you try and go out and get a job with a philosophy <laughs> degree. So I, um, I have no skills, and then to add on to it, I went to Smith College, and I got a degree, a master's degree in religion and biblical studies. Still, try and go bag and grab groceries. That's about all I can do. Um, so with all of that hanging over my head, even though I thought I was gonna have to leave Holy Name of Jesus back in 2016, this is what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I am, whether it be here or, or somewhere, this is what I need to do. And I've probably told the story a hundred times, and, and so you maybe have heard it before, but my last retreat when I was in college, um, I had to make, you know, I knew I was going to the seminary, but I had to make my decision uh, whether I was going to go to seminary, and, well, David's decision, I, I was also thinking about law school. That was the fallback, was going to law school. Um, so I, I had to make my final decision. Am I going to the seminary or do I you know, go on to law school? And so I chose the seminary. In my last retreat, there was one of those, I don't even know what you call them. I always call them burlap. But Sharon says it's not burlap. What are those, lot, those banners called? Those, those coarse banners? I don't know what they're made out of. But it, it said, I have called you by your name and you are mine from Isaiah. And I've always felt called to do this. And I know of nothing else that I want to do, or really I, I can do. Um, so thinking that I was going to be relieved of this, I did contact my many friends in the United Church of Christ. I've always felt really drawn uh, to their theology. Um, they are very forward-thinking, very progressive, um, and, and I, I really, really like the democracy. Um, and I've always thought that that was a part of this church. Um, the cornerstone out there at Holy Name of Jesus from 1929 said that this uh, is the people's church, and this belongs to the people, and I, that's what motivated me. I, I, I love being a priest, but I didn't want to be the priest with the, uh, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And um, 
So I was always part of a dem I was brought up in this church, and that's the way I learned, and that's, that's the way I always believed. This is a democratic church. So I approached uh, the UCC, and from June 6th to June 17th, which is two five-day periods, I went up to Camp Calumet in New Hampshire, and I took their polity course. And do you know, none of you knew I was even gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone for two weeks, and nobody even said, where's Bob? So, you know, that, that hurt a little bit, but that also tells you that maybe I'm not working as hard as I thought. Um, so you didn't even know I was gone. I was back for the weekends, I was doing emails, I was making calls, but they weren't from 15th Air Street, they were from up at Camp Calumet up in New Hampshire. And up there at Camp Calumet, I took their polity course, which is the uh, prerequisite before you can begin to enter into their ministerial studies. Uh, they accept my ordination as a National Catholic. So I went through that, and I was surprised at how comfortable uh, the UCC felt to me. And the you know, parish committee we had on Wednesday, um, we were talking, and you know, someone said, we're going to leave. And I said, don't leave. I said, you guys, you, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not Protestant, you're not Catholic, you're not, I mean, you're not Protestant, like, like I have some of these inklings in me. So I said, you know, don't make any rash decisions. Um, but, but it really felt good to me. And this is what I, I really, I gotta emphasize this and then emphasize it again. And please, if you don't remember anything else, just remember this. I have always felt in my ministry that the National Catholic Church was, was a beautiful expression of church. It is where I was brought up, it's where I expected to die in. It's a wonderful, wonderful church. But, it's long, but it's for, as much as I loved this church, I never thought we were the only church. And I hope you can remember me preaching that sometimes when you know, we were here, I said as well that God's at the Ukrainian Catholic Church, God is at the Roman Catholic Church, God is at the, uh, the Congregational Church when it was there, God is, is over at the Assembly of God. I never believed that this is the only way that God wanted to be worshipped. And so when I was at this altar, as I was just two minutes ago, I really believed in the real presence of Jesus. I really believe in that Catholic understanding of the priesthood. I really believe in this is the real presence. The only thing is it's not the only thing that I believe. I believe in this, but I also believe that God is, is available and Jesus is available in other ways. And so at the end of that two-week polity course up at Camp Calumet, um, for the first time in my life ever, I, I accepted the Eucharist um, at a UCC service. And what meant so much to me was I still felt, oh my gosh, Father Senior Banash. Oh dear. Hello, Father Senior Banash. Father Senior Banash is uh, like a mentor to me. Um, so when I received communion there, it was the same feeling of a connection with Christ. It was the same uh, reverence, it was the same dignity, it was the same sanctity. And I understand that the theology is completely different. Um, there is no real presence in that church, but there is a presence. And when I received communion at that time, I said, this is going to be okay. This is something that I can do. It's, it's not a lesser. It's not, you know, different doesn't mean better or worse. And so I received communion, and it was like, okay. And still, I had not made a decision to leave. In November um, of 2016, I was called into Scranton for a doctrine commission meeting. And doctrine commission meeting was when I decided uh, this is all I can do. Um, they asked me to per, uh, make a presentation. They asked me in the spring um, to come up with a presentation to make at the doctrine commission meeting. And they said that they would have um, you know, their arguments as well. Well, they're the ones who called the meeting. They're the ones who set the agenda in the spring. November 29th, the night before the Doctrine Commission meeting, or maybe two nights before, because I had to drive down to Scranton, I can't remember if it was the night before the, or two nights before, there were no papers shared, which means that we were going to go to a Doctrine Commission meeting and talk about something that was ready to get me booted out of the church, and no one had even bothered to read my paper or I had a chance to read their paper. When I sat there at that table and I listened to all of this discussion that had nothing to do with anything that myself or women's ordination now were, were 
They didn't know because they hadn't seen the paper. They hadn't read the paper. And when I, in my paper, I said, I actually referenced a lot of the things on the one web page. That was available, and nobody bothered to read those. And yet that was why I was called in. So that meant that it wasn't up here. It was visceral. They just could not accept the idea of even talking about women's ordination now. And so at that meeting, my past pastor, from the time I was 8 to 18, sat right next to me, um, Prime Bishop Emeritus, John Swantak, and I whispered to Father uh, Bishop Swantak, I said, I think I have to leave. And so in November of, 9, of 2016, that is when I made my decision that I cannot stay in this church. And it was not at all because of the holy name of Jesus. You kept me here a lot longer than I should have been. Um, but I loved every one of you. Um, I loved this congregation. I loved this community. I loved being a part of it. You have meant so much to me. And as I said in the letter, after 29 plus years, it's not like you're only parishioners, you're friends. And um, I could not, it was, a, it, was, it was so hard to make that decision. So January 8th, 2017 was the final service of the South Deerfield Congregational Church and I attended. Um, one of the presiders at that closing was what they call a conference minister by the name of Jonathan New. And so Jonathan New, I invited to come over to my rectory since I had spent two weeks with him at Camp Calumet that you didn't even know about. Um, <laughs> so I talked to, uh, to uh, Reverend New um, over at the rectory, and at that time I said, I, I think I need to, to make the jump. And so he put me in touch with a Reverend Kelly Gallagher, and uh, Reverend Kelly Gallagher is the local association minister. Um, I think that's the terminology. I got work on all of that, and I already told him over there. I said, "Don't be surprised if for a while I start prayers and I do the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit." Um, but anyway, Kelly Gallagher is the one who is um, the one who got me in touch with the committee on ministry. And you know, God has a good sense of humor. I'm leaving. One of the main reasons is because of women in the ministry. My new boss is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> kick out of the fact that this red-headed Kelly Gallagher is my new bishop. <laughs> so anyway, I, God, he, he's, a, he's a good guy, that God. Um, so anyway, I met with her on March 9th of 2017 up at the Second Congregational Church in Greenfield. And it was in their, it's a beautiful church, it's off in their living room. And I, the first thing I said to Kelly Gallagher is I feel like I'm cheating on my wife. I'm sneaking around, I can't tell people what I'm doing, you know, we're meeting in these back corners, and it, it was a horrible, horrible feeling. And it's been a horrible, horrible feeling since November until Friday. I've been living a secret life. Um, I needed to, to serve you, I wanted to serve throughout the summer, um, and, and I just could not tell any of you, besides a couple of you, um, you know, what I was going through. And, for, the, for those who did know and who kept it quiet, uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, I was really under the assumption that um, as soon as people found out that I was going to UCC, they would not let me um, have a, a slower process of removing myself. I thought that would be it. Um, and so that's why I couldn't say anything. Um, so anyway, um, I did meet with Kelly Gallagher. She put me in touch with what's called a committee on ministry. And I met that group at the First Congregational Church of Greenfield on April 26th. I submitted what is called a call, a privilege of call paper, since I said they do accept my, my ordination. And what I'm asking for is the privilege of call to their ordained ministry. That was accepted on May 31st. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I presented it to them on May 31st. The committee of ministry met on June 20th uh, to discuss me and my paper. And beside me was uh, my assigned mentor, who is the Reverend Dr. Cynthia Cross and Harry from the Greenfield Congregational Church. And um, they, they met, and at that time, they accepted my paper, which meant that they accepted me into the privilege of call uh, process. Again, God works in mysterious ways. The night of June 20th, I was accepted into the ministerial program of my new church. Later that same night, but technically the next day, about one, two in the morning, the last person who ever supported me in the hierarchy of the PNCC, Bishop Thomas Gannat, died. 
I was accepted into the UCC that evening, that same night, Bishop Ganat died. So there's a lot of things that have kind of been coming together, and I really do feel that Jesus is calling me to a new way to serve because I can't serve here anymore, even though I love all of you so much and I love this congregation so much. I will be moving to uh, 19B Mill Village Road um, September 1st, and if you have my letter, it's in the letterhead, and uh, my, my address is there, um, my email address is there, and uh, there's no phone number because the phone that I use is the, uh, is the parishes, and so I'll obviously, unless you guys want to keep paying my bills, <laughs> uh, so I will be getting rid of the, uh, the phone and getting a new one. When I get that, I'll, I'll post it somehow, somewhere for you. And, and I don't mind at all, you know, being friends with any and all who would like to. I'm sorry for, uh, for the pain that I've caused a lot of you. Uh, but if you would like to be friends, I would like that. But I simply cannot uh, interfere in the work of the next pastor, whomever um, he or she may be. Um, and so that I cannot do. But if we're here in town for at least the next 12 months. Um, and if you'd like, I, I'd be only too happy um, to be friends with you. Um, in 1914, Bishop Hoder uh, said this at the Synod. He said, learn to govern yourself, learn to decide for yourself, learn to think for yourself. I want that to be the preface for what I'm going to now say, because you guys are on a difficult path, um, pastorless for a little while. One is not the reason that I'm leaving. One did not cause my, my resignation. One did not cause me to run into to conflicts uh, with the hierarchy. One is an expression of the fact that I really believe in the things that Bishop Hoder said. Learn to govern yourselves, learn to think for yourselves, uh, learn to decide for yourself. When you do that, I think in the year 2017, that has to open you up to the possibility that these wonderful girls behind me could be a priest here at this altar, as well as any man. Um, that you don't have to be a male body to have a godly spirit. And because of that, it wasn't women's ordination now. It was my dedication to this church as a, dem as a democratic church that said to me, we have to move forward. We can't be ruled by medieval laws. And so that whole idea of women's ordination now is not the cause for me to leave. It's an expression of why I had to leave. So please don't blame anybody on one. I am so proud of one. They did not force any of this on me. Um, and I would just ask that you know you keep each other in your prayers. You keep me and my family in your prayers. Um, my daughter Kristen came in from Boston this morning. My daughter Amanda is sitting right next to her. My wife Sharon is up in the uh, up in the choir singing. I thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, that you let me raise my family here in this wonderful community. You know, a lot of priests have to move a lot and they, they take children out of one place and move them to another. Uh, my girls were so active and everything and, and uh, it meant just so much that I could raise them here and they've done great. Uh, Kristen's going off for, uh, uh, she'll be ticked off at me, but she's gonna have a, uh, an interview for a job promotion tomorrow. Uh, so good for her. My daughter Amanda is going to be a senior in college, and uh, well, Sharon still gets stuck with me. <laughs> and so the next time I see you, um, well, up until you know the end of this month, I'll be in black. Um, and if you want, I got collars. Uh, <laughs> and after that, I'll, I'll just be in, in regular clothes. And I know it's hard enough for the women to concentrate on masks when I look this good in black. <laughs> You, you should see me in a suit jacket and tie, so good luck to the next church that has me. Um, but honest to gosh, all joking aside, I really, this is a, a time, um, I know it's sad, and I had a couple of tough moments, but this really is a, um, it's just a change, it's not dying. So remember what the parish committee came in, either, either the Calvos are dying or there's a resignation, it's just a resignation. The parish celebrated its 88th birthday on Friday. Um, I was here the longest serving pastor, and I take great pride in that, but it was only 29 and a half years out of 88. Um, the parish priests have come and gone, uh, holy name has remained, and um, you have a parish committee in place that is, that is uh, ready to uh, talk to the bishop, 
and um, you know, and the bishop do, does have the best interest of the holy name of Jesus at heart. So I think what I would like to do um, is maybe close with the uh, the hymn of the church, um, and I think that's on page 103 of uh, of your mass booklets. Um, and then after that, maybe we can ask Linda Pahalski, your uh, parish committee chairperson, to come forward because she has some announcements about next Sunday. And then we'll sing our recessional. And um, thank you. after being gone for quite a while. Um, so thank you for everything you've done. And then um, we're going to have a tough road ahead for a little while, but for next Sunday, though, we have Mass at 11 o'clock here. Father Adam will be here, and we'll go from there, and we'll keep you posted as to what's going on. It's 11 o'clock next Sunday, people. <laughs> okay.